What this smells like to me is a really crisp apple and pear and to be honest guys Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh here. Today I want to do a little review on this vintage 2013 Abercrombie & Fitch Crest Cologne. Now, I think you could find this on eBay for about $50 right now. It is a one milliliter, so that is kind of expensive, but at the same time, a lot of other Abercrombie & Fitch fragrances are going for way, way, way more than this. The only reason I don't think this is really purchased that much or the reason that it's not that overpriced is because it doesn't have that much hype behind it. But the golden age of Abercrombie was the Mike Jeffries era and he left in 2014. This fragrance was created in 2013. So this was kind of at the end of the best era of Abercrombie and it was still created under the guide of the master who made Abercrombie and Fitch famous. Abercrombie and Fitch is known for just coming out with fragrances and killing them right away. So a lot of these older fragrances, you know, from 10 years ago or so, there's not as much information on it and it's super sad, but the notes I found online were mandarin, melon, pear, amber and sandalwood what this smells like to me is a very crisp like apple pear kind of fragrance it's kind of full like a musk but it's not musk either maybe it is a little bit of that amber because apparently abercrombie and fitch almost always use amber especially nowadays it has a little bit of uniqueness to it but we'll get more of that into the pros and the cons and again what this smells like to me is a really crisp apple and pear and to be honest guys very few male fragrances utilize pear very well. I think Ultra Male was one of the ones that used it and maybe a couple other ones out there. But it's one of those ones that's not used by very many male fragrances. So if they're able to pull it off, it's going to give it a unique vibe in my opinion. And that's probably what makes this fragrance smell as unique as it is. If I were to go with some situations with this fragrance, the gym, this is good because it's nice and light. It's fruity, but not juicy, if that makes sense. The date is just okay, uh, nothing special, but it's not the worst thing ever. School, this is great. I mean, I'll get more into the pros and cons, but this kind of, when you look at the old Abercrombie ads of just the real stoic guys with the ripped abs, I kind of can envision this. And so it works out really well in like a school type of setting. This is just a everyday sexy young man's fragrance. Doesn't really overly excel in summer or winter really so i would say it's somewhere in the middle it does have a fruity quality but again it's not juicy all right guys let's jump into the pros of this fragrance the pros is that it has a very different sexy likable vibe and it also kind of reminds me of that classic Abercrombie and Fitch vibe. If you can remember just all the pictures they'd have of people just like staring into the sunset or being all super in shape by like the river or something. For some reason, I just kind of feel that kind of vibe with this fragrance. It's almost like they have those pictures up on the wall while they're creating the fragrance and they're like, I, I want it to smell like this. Cause for some reason it doesn't fit every situation for every person, but for that, it's like, I could see this kind of fitting that old marketing. So I do like how unique it is because most men's fragrances do not feature pear. I think it's more of a female note. Men's fragrances that pull it off end up being very unique. And I feel like this is very unique because of it. I kind of smell like a crisp apple pear, like I was saying before. Almost a little bit of a piney vibe in there as well, like a pine tree vibe. Uh, maybe that's what's kind of giving it a little bit more thickness, but really sexy, really likable. Has a little bit of that classic Abercrombie and Fitch vibe because this was created under the supervision of Mike Jeffries, who created all of our favorite Abercrombie and Fitch fragrances, except for First Instinct, but a lot of uh, classic Abercrombie and Fitch fans <laughs> actually really don't like First Instinct. I think it's a solid offering. And then the last pro of this is that it is very inoffensive. Uh, if you come across people who really don't like fragrances or you want to just not be a little bit too loud, this fragrance is very inoffensive. Gotta give that on the pro. All right, guys, let's jump into the cons of this fragrance. The cons is that it has very very light projection and it's actually really really sad because that's the biggest thing that holds holds this fragrance back and I would actually recommend it to a much higher amount of people had it had maybe like an hour and a half longevity and projection
infection or just noticeably smelling it like you know eight nine hours away it has very very light projection i would say if you spray this up pretty hard you might have 45 minutes to an hour projection the scent itself is kind of inoffensive and light and then the projection being light it's just a very light fragrance very unfortunate with that and then this is kind of searching for cons but i'm going to be completely honest with you i feel like they should have took more of a risk with this fragrance i do like that it smells like abercrombie and it pulls off that pear vibe i really do like those aspects to it but it doesn't feel like it's risking enough um, to end up being such a good scent i feel like the more fragrance risks and then pulls off the better it is overall and i just feel like this doesn't take enough risks and on top of that it has a very very light projection so it's like those two what really holds me back from recommending this to more people i do recommend this to a small amount of people i'll tell you that at the end but if i were to give you a smell rating i'd give it an 8 out of 10 because i can picture that classic abercrombie and fitch vibe again i've said this a bunch in this video with that pair and i do think those two I'm gonna give it an eight on fragrance smell alone just because of that. Not the most unique thing, but I do like that they pulled it off. And then likability, this is the strongest suit. I'm gonna have to give it an 8.5 to a nine. The only reason I wouldn't give this like a 9.5 is because it doesn't have that possibility of getting like a super, super sexy reaction like maybe you'd get with Leighton or maybe Creed Aventus or Baccarat Rouge 540. It is overall super, super likable. For longevity projection, I'm gonna have to give it a 4.5 to a five out of 10. Very, very light projection on this one, very unfortunate, but who should get this fragrance? I wouldn't recommend very many people getting this fragrance. I would recommend a classic Abercrombie and Fitch collector to get this fragrance because it's only $50. It's created under that kind of an era. It is slightly unique. If you enjoy personally collecting Abercrombie fragrances, it's cool to have one of these, maybe two. Uh, maybe it'll go discontinued and you could you know, sell it for a lot later because it is just an average fragrance. But yeah, I would recommend this for mainly the Abercrombie fragrance collectors. And um, yeah, and it's only $50. So it's not too bad when you consider some of the Abercrombie and Fitch fragrances could go, sometimes they're up to like 200, 300 for like a classic Ezra or like a rule 925 signature. So anyways, guys, that's been my review of Abercrombie & Fitch Crest. Let me know what you think of this fragrance down below. Have you smelled this fragrance? Do you like Abercrombie? Do you not like Abercrombie? Let me know down below. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys. Hope you guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.